A rocket initially at rest on the ground accelerates straight upward with a rest from rest with a constant acceleration of 44.1 meters per second squared. The acceleration period lasts for eight seconds until the fuel is exhausted. After that, the rocket is in free fall. So I'm gonna try and imagine what this problem is talking about. I don't really care what the question marks are, just so you guys understand. Meaning there's only so many things they can ask. They could ask the entire time that the rocket was in flight. They could ask what the maximum height of the rocket was. They could ask how fast the rocket was going when it smashed into the ground. I don't really know. We, we don't really have a full idea of what they're asking and it doesn't matter. It's all the same question regardless. So they might ask bits and pieces slightly different, but we have quite a bit of given information at the start. I want you to imagine though what is happening to the rocket. If we assume that the rocket begins its journey on the ground, which is not an unreasonable assumption, then let's assume that the ground is here and that the ground represents an initial position of zero. Is that okay? So initial position zero. And the rocket begins, as all rockets do, at rest. The engines fire, the rocket begins to lift off. And during that time, the rocket is experiencing an acceleration of 44.1 meters per second squared. Everybody okay with this? Do I need to write it bigger or talk louder? All right. The rocket accelerates upwards until the engine shut off after eight seconds. So after eight seconds, the rocket is now here. And no more rocket engine. Fair enough? Does that mean the rocket instantaneously stopped? No. No. The rocket accelerated from some, I would assume, initial velocity of zero to some final velocity that is not zero. I don't know what it is. I do know that it had an acceleration that was upwards for a time period of eight seconds. Are we follow along so far? That suggests that at this moment, the, the rocket does have some upwards velocity. But now the rocket is going to be accelerated by gravity, suggesting that it'll eventually make it to a position, say here, where the rocket's velocity will now be zero. Do you guys see that too? After the rocket engine shuts off, what's accelerating it? Gravity. gravity. So gravity now applies an acceleration of Mastering will want you to use 9.8 meters per second squared. So we should probably do what mastering does, don't you think? So I'll write 9.8 meters per second squared. Now I'm getting a very complicated set of things happening here. I got velocities and accelerations written everywhere. <coughs> we need a way of being organized. And I believe in organization here. And so one thing I will tell you is that you can only use Galileo's rules of motion if the acceleration is constant, which means I can only use those relationships one acceleration at a time. So I'm going to say that when the rocket engines were firing, that's one acceleration. Good so far? Let's figure out all we can from that piece of information. Just for fun, we have nothing else to do today. So I'm going to write out V final, A, V initial, T delta X. Not a great order, but I don't care. And this is when engines fire. Would you like up to be positive or up to be negative? All right, that means the initial velocity zero doesn't have a positive or a negative. The acceleration was upwards at 44.1 meters per second squared. Final velocity is unknown, but the time was eight seconds. It looks to me like I could find out the final velocity of the rocket, or I could find the displacement of the rocket, or both. So let's pick one of them. Which one would you guys like to pick? All right, so clearly both. So we'll do final velocity first, then displacement. They're both pretty straightforward. I'm going to start with final velocity, which brings these four things together, but does not have displacement in it. 
Knowing that I memorized the equations this weekend because I had nothing better to do, that suggests VF equals AT plus VI. I'm sure all of you did too. Which means 44.1 times 8 plus 0 will be the final velocity of the rocket. 350? 353? Okay. 353 meters per second. They gave me gravity as 9.80 meters per second squared in the problem and that the velocity, the acceleration was 44.1. That's three significant digits. So leaving my answer as 353 is appropriate, three significant digits. We know that they're real sticklers on that garbage. All right, so we know right here, the rocket actually is moving at 353 meters per second. 353 meters per second. We can now find a displacement, and we could use any relationship we want, but I'm not going to use the one with final velocity in it. I'm going to assume that I am terrible at mathematics and made a mistake. So rather than base my next answer on something I might have done wrong, I'm going to base my next answer on the given information where possible. Does that make sense? So I'm going to use delta x equals one-half a t squared plus vi times t. Good to go? That is one-half times 44.1 times 8 squared, which, I don't know, 8 squared is 64, 22 and a half. I don't know. I'm going to need one of you guys to push the buttons and tell me. 1,410 meters, significant places. Three significant places would be that many significant places. Okay? Yeah, I mean, 411 point whatever is fine. Unless you're typing it into mastering, I just want to make sure we know our significant places. Now, up until this point, I really don't know what the question has been. But... This is kind of a mess. Are there any questions about what I've done, drawn here? Now, again, I'm not really looking at the... I am now thinking, though, that the rocket is now 1,410 meters above the ground. Right here, when the engine's cut off. Moving upwards at 353 meters per second when the engines cut off, right? But now the engines have cut off. So it's being accelerated downwards by gravity, 9.80 meters per second squared. I don't know what the questions are. For that, we should dive into the, the problem. But I do know I have a new set of motion variables. And I want to be very careful about how I lay these out. I am going to split up um, delta x for just a minute so that you can consider something about the way we address this problem. The initial position is now 1410 meters. Right? That's where I started. It just might help you keep track of things. The acceleration is 9.80 meters per second squared. And should we continue with upwards being positive? Is that okay with you? If we do, then we need to make this negative. Now, this is interesting. What's the initial velocity for this portion of the problem? That's right. For those of you who don't understand why this is true, when the engines cut off, the rocket was going upwards at 353. The moment this new acceleration takes over, this is the initial velocity for this acceleration. This is how fast it was going when this acceleration took over. Does so everybody understand that? Because if not, that's worth writing a note or two down to yourself to look for things like this, a part of the problem that is connected to a previous part. Now, I'm gonna just be clear with myself and put positives there to make sure I know this was positive 1,410 meters above the ground traveling with a positive velocity of 353. I have three unknowns left. 
because I don't know delta x, and that's considered an unknown. I don't know time. I don't know final velocity. I need to know what they're asking of me in order to figure out what I actually might have left. So I'm going to say, it says, find the maximum height reached by the rocket. That's our question. The maximum height reached by the rocket is not going to be 1,410 meters because the rocket's still going upwards. Do you all agree with that? So we need to find out what the final position is going to be of the rocket. Now here's where it's hard. How do we know it's reached its highest point? When the final velocity is zero. That's right. If the final velocity was something other than zero, say it was still five meters per second, then it would still be going up. And if the final velocity was negative five meters per second, well, it's, it's going down now. No longer at its highest point, but when the velocity is zero and it's neither going up nor down, it has reached the highest point. Does that seem reasonable? Seems to me like we have everything we need to figure out the highest position of the rocket. We don't need the time. We'll use everything else. That suggests to me, because I memorized these, V final, oops, not like that, V final squared minus V initial squared equals 2a delta x. Good so far? 0 minus 353 squared equals 2 times negative 9.8 times <coughs> delta x. This sounds like a job for your calculator. Negative 353 squared divided by negative 19.6 equals delta x. I'll wait patiently. But it's going to be a big number. I mean, 300 squared is a lot. It's a lot of stuff. 110 meters. Meaning, although this is how much higher the rocket goes, the question asked, bless you, find the maximum height reached by the rocket. So I must take my initial position and add it to that displacement, which looks to be 0, 6, and 7, 4 and 3 is 7, 6 and 1 is 7 meters. Did I do my adding correctly? Yes. Oh, goody. 7,770 meters appears to be the maximum height attained by the rocket. Any question about this part of the problem? All right. So the egg falls a distance of 0.45 meters until it contacts the carpet. During that time, what is the acceleration on the egg? 9.8 meters per second squared. Sure, the important word here is falls. However, it falls because there's nothing changing its acceleration. The moment it touches the carpet, what direction does the carpet push on the egg? Up, which suggests that the acceleration during the fall is downwards, but the carpet is going to apply an acceleration upwards to stop the egg. A direction of push is a direction of an acceleration. So I see two accelerations. The acceleration that is used when the egg is falling to the carpet, and then the acceleration from the carpet used to stop the egg. I would argue that the acceleration while falling starts at a velocity of zero. Egg was dropped, key word there. An acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, finally reaching a point where there is some final velocity when it hits the carpet that is unknown to me. Good so far? Now, do you see that that's one set of motion variables because it has one acceleration? And that the carpet's gonna be a different set of motion variables because it'll be a different acceleration. 
There is one problem that we have. Does the egg fall 45 centimeters or does the egg fall 42 centimeters? The reason I ask is because it's not clear. Is 45 centimeters measured from the top of the carpet or is 45 centimeters measured from the bottom of the carpet? I don't know that that's clear in the problem. And you getting this wrong, I don't think should matter because I think the steps you'd have to take are the same and the rest of this is pretty ambiguous. Would you agree? So if you used 42, great. If you used 45, great. I would give you full credit for either. Does that make sense? It's my test you have to worry about. So let's go ahead and say that the egg had a delta X of 0.45 meters, an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, an initial velocity of zero, an unknown final velocity, and an unknown time. Would you like up to be positive or up to be negative? Look, I'm gonna choose for you. I'm gonna make downwards positive. The last time downwards was negative. It seems like we should mix it up a little bit. Okay? Yes. So, making downwards positive, I'm gonna make my fall positive 45 meters and my acceleration positive 9.8 meters per second squared. What should we, what should we solve for? how long it takes to reach the carpet, or how fast it's going when it reaches the carpet. I believe we should solve for how fast it's going when it reaches the carpet. I don't think it matters how long it takes. That will not contribute to the next part of the problem. But how fast it's going when it hits the carpet will be the initial velocity for the carpet slowing the egg down. Follow me? So we want this. Now, to get this answer, let's just ignore for a moment what the situation of the problem is, find something that doesn't have T in it, and put that all together. This one work for you guys? Please be careful when you do this. Let's first point out that had we made downwards negative, do you realize both of these would have been negative and we'd still be left with the same result? So the equations will work out to ensure that if you're consistent with your choice of sign, you'll get the right answer. And you won't have to worry about whether you get a positive or a negative. If you get a negative answer, it tells you it's in the opposite direction. <coughs> However, Something interesting happens here. What is 2 times 9.8 times 0.45? What's that? Okay. So 8.82 equals V final squared. I need to take the square root of both sides. When you take the square root of both sides, please be aware that in math, you must consider both the positive and negative of any square root. I'm bringing this up because in this problem, you have to figure out whether the egg has a positive final velocity or a negative final velocity. The math can't tell us the answer. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That because there's a choice made here, they are both possible answers you have to figure out whether the egg is moving downwards or the egg is moving upwards. Now, the square root of 8.82 is just a little less than three. What is it, two point what? All right, 2.97 or 9.6. So I'm just gonna write seven. Not because I don't like the six better, I just don't care. Should I put a positive there or a negative there? Is the egg going downwards when it reaches the carpet or upwards when it reaches the carpet? Downwards. downwards. And we said downwards was positive. The answer is positive 2.97 meters per second or better, say downwards.
Are we okay so far? All right. Keep going. Because we want the acceleration on the egg from the carpet. Now, here's my view. So move all that out of the way for a minute. I now have an egg that's in contact with three centimeter deep carpet. It's moving downwards at 2.97 meters per second. After a moment or two, the egg will have squashed the carpet some, but what will its velocity be? If we assume it squashed the carpet three centimeters in coming to rest, then we have three pieces of information that we could use to figure out the acceleration. Now, I want to handle the word minimum that was in the problem. But to this point, do we all have an agreement on what's happening here? Can I continue with downwards being positive? Is that okay? So delta x, v initial, v final, a, t. Delta x is 0 0.03 meters. Everything has to be in the same unit, so I can't use three centimeters. VI, 2.97 meters per second. VF, zero. And I don't know what the acceleration is. We made downwards positive, so these are both positive. Now, I'm only talking to the truly smart among you. The rest of you, this might hurt your, your, your feelings. V final squared minus V initial squared equals 2A delta X. Now, V final, we already know, is zero. V initial is 2.97. But before I start plugging all that in, this is going to be 0 minus V initial squared equals 2A delta X, which means if I just use my algebra skills, and I told you this is going to hurt some of your heads, it's okay. This is where all the numbers will go. You follow me so far? It says the minimum acceleration. I assumed three centimeters. I assumed the biggest number for delta x. The biggest number for delta x is the smallest number for the acceleration, the minimum. If delta x is anything less than that, the acceleration would be a greater number. They asked for the minimum possible acceleration. Is it possible for the egg to squish the carpet more than three centimeters? No. So this will yield the minimum, which the, I don't know what the answer is. I think it's gonna be like 150 or something. So, all right guys. So I know that the jogger, and typically I'd, I'd write a picture, but, or draw a picture, but because of the way this problem is being asked, I'm just gonna make two lists of what I know. They tell me that the bus had an initial velocity of 16 meters per second and a final velocity of 20 meters per second. And it did so in a time of eight seconds. Fair enough? They tell me that the jogger had an initial velocity of four meters per second and they tell me nothing else. I don't know the final velocity, don't know the acceleration, don't know the time, don't know the displacement. Now, it says the jogger speeds up with the same acceleration. 
So I don't know what the acceleration is for the bus. I do see that I have three pieces of information suggesting I could figure out the acceleration of the bus. So would you all be not too predisposed to try that out? We okay with that? I'm gonna ignore displacement. And from what I have here, I'm going to say that um, I have memorized the equations, so I don't have to look at the board. I would encourage you to get to a similar place. It will make doing these a little easier. So it seems to me that the acceleration will be V final minus V initial over T. That's going to be 20 minus 16 over 8, which is going to be 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Right, 20 minus 16 is 4, 4 eighths is a half. So I now have the acceleration of the bus. This allows me, ooh, get you over there, you over there very close, and let's consider the jogger. The jogger has an acceleration of 0.5 meters per second squared. Now, it asks, what can I determine about the jogger's motion using these data? Very little. I don't have any other motion variable. I know the acceleration of the jogger, that's it. Now, it gave me some choices of things I could maybe consider. So the acceleration is one. It says, do I know the mass of the jogger? No. Do I know what the velocity of the jogger as a function of time as observed by a stationary observer would be? Well, that would be a graph of the jogger. Could I construct a graph of the jogger's velocity versus time? Sure. I easily could. This would be a graph with a straight line, slope of one half, starting with an initial velocity of four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So starting at four, let's make this uh, one second, two seconds. So I know it's going to go four to, it goes a half a meter per second every second. So something like that would be my graph with a slope of a half. For how many seconds? I don't know. It doesn't say that. It just says, could I sketch a graph? The answer is yes. Could I demonstrate the position of the jogger as a function of time as observed by a stationary observer? Sure. I could do that too. What's that going to look like? It's going to be similar. Now, I would have to make a, a supposition here that the jogger started from the origin. That's not unreasonable. And if I was to use a similar time, I know the graph would look like this because the velocity is increasing. But I actually know more than that. The equation for the line for the velocity graph would be equal to 0.5 t plus 4. That's a function that describes the jogger, more than just a graph. Although I can sketch the graph, I could write a function for the jogger's position. I would pick a function that has t in it and initial velocity. It would be a function for the position of the jogger as time goes on. Now, this really isn't a function of the position. This is a function of the displacement. If I'd want the position, I would have to say x final minus x initial equals 1 half times 0.5 t squared plus 4t, and then make the assumption that the initial position was 0. Technically. That's what I would have to do. Now, what are they really looking for? These are all things I could do with the information that was given. I am unlikely to ask the questions in this way on the exam. I am more likely to ask questions to have a pointed response. So I would probably give you this question, but then ask, what was the jogger's final velocity after a period of time? Say five seconds or eight seconds or something. I'm less likely to have an open-ended question where you could tell me all the things you could do with the information.
Does that make sense? I know the book tends to like that. I'm not a big fan. Any further discussion about this question? Okay. And just so that we are all on the same page here, um, three centimeter thick carpet is some really thick shag there. So this house is in definite need of some updating if their carpet is three centimeters thick. That's, I think they're including the pad, to be honest with you, because if it was all shag, that would be, that'd be like retro 70s, and I don't think anybody's house would be like that. But let's, um, let's talk about what happens here to the egg. First, the egg is dropped. That does suggest something important. It suggests that the egg had an initial velocity of zero. That's what dropped means. They tell us that the egg is 0.45 meters from, now this part's ambiguous. Is it 0.45 meters from the bottom of the carpet or the top of the carpet? The problem doesn't say. So I'm gonna treat this as 0.45 centimeters from the top of the carpet. But we really don't know the answer to that, which is important because we don't know whether the carpet begins to accelerate the egg after 42 centimeters of falling or after 45 centimeters of falling. That's three centimeters different. It'll make a minor difference in the answer. But can we all just decide to do it this way? On the test, if you were to interpret this question wrong or different, I'm not sure I'd mark you wrong for that because you could have interpreted that the 45 goes all the way to here. Fair enough? It's not clear enough in the question. I want you to know that we should be thinking about these things. So let's say this is three centimeters though. This is an important piece of information that I'm gonna lay out now. And that is the egg is accelerated by what after you drop it? Gravity. So during the time that the egg is falling downwards, gravity is acting on it to cause an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. That is until the egg touches the carpet. What direction must the carpet push on the egg to stop it? Upwards, which means there is a separate acceleration from the carpet on the egg that exists the moment the egg touches the carpet. Now, Galileo's rules of motion require A, a constant acceleration, and B, initial conditions that are measurable. I'm saying this to you because I see two different accelerations here, which suggests two separate sets of motion equations one set that governs the fall of the egg, and one set that governs the stopping of the egg. And they must be different because they have different accelerations. Let's talk about the fall first. When we deal with the fall, the initial velocity of the egg is zero. The egg is accelerated at 9.8 meters per second squared. The final velocity of the egg is unknown the time it takes the egg to reach the carpet is unknown, but we know that the egg has to fall over a displacement of 45 centimeters, which I'll put in meters. The real question is, do I want to make downwards positive or downwards negative? I don't care, I just need a choice. All right, so downwards is now negative. Upwards is positive. Please note, I'm being explicit. I'm putting it into the problem. And then I am carefully selecting anything that is a vector and points downwards and making it negative. I would encourage you to do the same. Now, all of this still doesn't tell me what it is that I need to do. I do know that I can figure out how fast the egg is going when it hits the carpet, or I could figure out how long it takes for the egg to reach the carpet. Is there any of those that I would want? Yes, sir? The final velocity. And why? Because that's the, um, 
initial velocity when it hits the carpet. You guys hear that? I think that's an important detail. When the egg reaches the carpet, it is moving downwards with whatever this final velocity is. But the carpet is going to bring the egg to rest. So the carpet will have a series of motion equations as well. We know that during the time that the egg is in contact with the carpet, it will be brought to rest. So its final velocity from the carpet will be zero. We know during the time that it's in contact with the carpet that it will travel downwards three centimeters. So I'll make that negative and convert it to meters. I do not know the time or the acceleration that the carpet will provide. I am asked about the acceleration. Now, the only way I'm going to be able to deal with this is if I know how fast the egg is going when it reaches the carpet. I need to know how fast the egg was going due to gravity because it becomes the speed at which the carpet has to deal with the egg. Does that make sense so far? Any questions about this? Now, before I go on, I've given you a procedure, haven't I? We've laid out all the information. We've been careful to make sure that we've chosen our direction with care. We've tried to figure out how the parts of the problem are related, and I think it's given us a direction to go. It suggests that if we figure out how fast the egg was going when it reached the carpet, we could use that to figure out the acceleration that the carpet applied to the egg. Ready to move on? Work this out? So let's, um, kind of out of room here, so move everything off to the side for just a minute, and let's deal with the fall again. I'm going to use v final squared minus v initial squared equals 2a delta x, because it has everything there except for the time. Do you guys see that okay? Now you guys still have your numbers in front of you, I don't but v final squared minus zero squared equals two times negative 9.8 times negative 0 0.45. Good so far? I wanna point out something important. Had we made downwards positive, do you realize both of these would have been positive? And you realize it does not change the answer in any way? That's important. Keep that in mind. Consistency will ensure that your vector values work out for you. However, this problem does pose an issue. We'll find that v final squared equals 8.8 .8 something. I don't know what this is. I need help. 8.82? To get the final velocity, we would have to take the square root of both sides. Please remember that when taking the square root, you're responsible to consider both roots because one of these answers is correct and one of these is incorrect. This particular equation can't tell us the direction of our answer. We have to know it from other clues in the problem. And it's because of the square root. It takes away the directional information. Same reason the square takes it away. So when we work this out, we're gonna get an answer of like 2.97, I think. Should that be positive or negative? Is the egg traveling downwards or upwards when it reaches the carpet? So by definition, we should choose the negative root since it means downward. Okay, you see why we had to make this discussion? Now I'm going intentionally slow. You guys do understand how hard this is for me. But is there any question before I go on to the next portion? 
We now know how fast the egg was going when it reached the carpet. So, let's move that out of the way and now deal with the carpet. The carpet is gonna bring the egg to rest when it reached the ground traveling downwards at 2.97 meters per second. We don't know the acceleration, but we do know that the displacement will also be downwards three centimeters, and we don't have the time. Any question about where I got those pieces of information? All right. That being said, I want to know what the acceleration from the carpet is. And here's where I want you to be better. V final squared minus V initial squared equals 2A delta X. Good so far? That's 0 minus negative 2.97 squared equals 2A I'm going to leave this as delta x for just a minute. 2.97 squared is going to be 8.82 from earlier, right? Making this negative 8.82 divided by 2 delta x. That has to equal a. Now, I'm putting this like this right here. Because the problem actually asked, and I think that this is one of those things that tends to... Um, confuse you. But I believe it said, I want to quote this out, find the minimum acceleration on the egg. That word might confuse you. But I want you to look at this relationship. It's an inverse relationship, correct? Meaning A depends on the inverse of delta x. We were told delta x was three centimeters, right? No. What were we told? Yes, ma'am. That the carpet's three centimeters? Right. We actually don't know what delta X is. We made the assumption that it squished the entire carpet. Is that necessarily true? No. It can't go more than that, or else it's now hitting the cement floor below the carpet. So the most that it could travel in hitting the carpet is three centimeters. Do you realize though, that if we put three centimeters in here, we get the minimum acceleration? Because the bigger that number is, the smaller the acceleration will be. Thus the word minimum. If it was anything less than three centimeters, it would be a larger acceleration. Thus the word minimum is being chosen right there in that. And you need to be aware of how these numbers are related when doing these kinds of problems. The acceleration will be probably bigger than this number. I don't think it squishes the carpet all the way. But it can't be less than this number. So at this point, I think you guys can do the rest. It's not really that big a deal. And I don't know, you get a big number, like what, 150? It's not negative, it's positive. Please be careful, it is positive. It's important that it's positive. I'm gonna bring that up in a minute, but what's the number? Somebody give me the number part. Please. 147. 147, which by the way, is 150 when we put it in two significant places because all the other numbers were given in two significant places. So 147, yep, probably. The answer is 150 and it's upward. The number comes out positive. So the acceleration is upward because we said positive was upward. So this is, uh, again, a car starts from rest and reaches a speed of 12 meters per second in 28 seconds. What can I determine about the motion of the car using this information? Well, I could tell you it's acceleration, how far it goes right off. Yeah, those are two things I could determine. Why? Because if we assume a constant acceleration, those are the things that would, would be able to be delivered to us from the motion equations. Now, I had four things to choose from here, and it said the fuel consumption. No, I have no way of knowing that. Uh, does, is there anything here about fuel consumption? I don't know how efficient the car is, so no. 
The distance the car has traveled in 28 seconds. Hmm. No. I can tell you the displacement, but I can't tell you the distance. And if you want to know why, what if the car is traveling in a circle? Right, they, don't, they didn't give me this. Now, here's the thing. I think most of you would have checked the box, the distance the car has traveled in 28 seconds. But be careful. Delta X is displacement. Um, the final location where the car goes. Nope, not unless I know the initial position of the car. Then through displacement, I can tell you the final position. Remember, delta X is X final minus X initial. So I can't tell you where the car is at the end unless I know where the car began. I would say that these are, um, this is kind of bean counting, nitty picky kind of stuff. But do you understand that they love that kind of crap on the multiple choice, right? That, I mean, teachers live to write this kind of stuff on multiple choice. Trust me, I lived for it all weekend. The average acceleration, yes, I could tell you the average acceleration over the interval. We assume it's constant, but I can tell you the average. I know how fast it was going at the end of the interval. I know how it began. I know how long it took to do so. That is the very definition of average acceleration. That's why that's the only right answer for part A. Part B says find the average acceleration of the car. All right, I'm thinking uh, I'd use relationship with those four things in it. Or I'd remember the definition of acceleration is delta V over T. Take your favorite pick and, and go with it. Either way, it's going to be uh, 12 minus zero over 28. Whatever that works out to be, you know, a little less than half, maybe 0 0.43, 0 0.42. I'll say 0.43 meters per second squared. Is there anything else? Nope, that's it the same as the egg question. Not that they are identical, but they are really stressing the same methodology. Consider this. The rocket is launched from the ground. So we have an initial position, I'll say of zero. Is that okay with you guys? I wrote that kind of small, but starting at the ground. And when the rocket engine fires, has an acceleration upwards of 44.1 meters per second squared. And the rocket engine fires for eight seconds. So if we use the fact that it started from rest, had an acceleration of 44.1 meters per second squared, and the engines fired for eight seconds, we could get a reasonable idea for how fast the rocket is going after eight seconds. Would you all agree that it'll be traveling upwards after those eight seconds? When the engine cuts off though, does it immediately stop moving? No, what's going to begin to accelerate it now? That's right. So there's the time that the motor is accelerating the rocket. Then it'll be the time where gravity is accelerating the rocket. During that time, it's a different acceleration. Now, I don't know what they're asking for. It's likely they're asking for, actually I do, I read the problem earlier. They're asking for the maximum height attained by the rocket. That suggests I will need to know how high it is when its velocity has finally reached zero. That okay? Now during this time, the acceleration on the rocket will be gravity. So I see two distinct accelerations. I see the acceleration that propels the rocket upwards. You may want to hear this part. Then there's the part where you have to figure out the acceleration due to gravity when the rocket's being brought to rest. You should probably realize that the final velocity for the motor becomes the initial velocity for gravity. That's what connects the two parts of the problem together. I do go into this problem in complete detail. Um, before we launch into a huge discussion of the answer to that question, 
let's just kind of get a picture of what's there. There's a, a graph that has, it looks like position, no, velocity and time. So it goes for a total of 40 seconds. And I see six and eight. And it looks like Gabrielle is at six. And Zena is at eight. So Zena and Gabrielle. Now there are several questions that they ask to get to there, but they, you are asking about the position function that compares Zena to Gabrielle. Now we are told in the problem that Gabrielle's position at time zero is 60 meters. So her XI is 60 meters and Zena's position at time zero, her, so her XI is zero meters. Is that okay? Now, first I can denote that both of these show an acceleration of zero, right? So I, I, I thought in this class and all the classes I talked about what that means, but if I have not, just pick any of the relationships that have initial conditions in them. And I'm choosing this one. Okay. With that relationship, when they say the acceleration is zero, they're telling me that the displacement equals VI times T. Is that okay? because the acceleration is zero. Now there's something more, and that is that V final equals AT plus V initial. If the acceleration is zero, then V final equals V initial. V initial. So what that really means, ultimately, is this is the only relationship to which we have to worry about, and there is no VI or VF, there's just V. Is that okay? So let's consider what this must stay, say about Gabrielle and Zena. So I'm just gonna kind of move this out of the way. First, delta x for Zena is going to be 8t. And delta x for Gabrielle is going to be 6t. But remember what delta x means. Delta X is X final minus X initial. For Zena, that's X final minus zero equals eight T. For Gabrielle, X final minus X initial equals six T, or X final minus 60 equals six T. Is that all okay so far? Now, just to put this into a little bit of perspective, this is the final position for Zena, and this is the final position for Gabrielle. So, the problem asks, write a function for Gabrielle with respect to Zena. So I want Gabrielle with respect to Zena. What is the position of Gabrielle when compared with Zena? Is that okay so far? So that suggests that Gabrielle, which is 6t plus 60, will go there. And Zena, which is just 8t, will go there. When I do that, I get 6t plus 60 minus 8t equals the difference in position between Gabrielle and Zena. Thus, 60 minus 2t equals that difference in position. I don't think that this was in any way obvious. So for those of you who thought it was obvious, I, I applaud you. I think this was actually challenging and required some real thought about what the variables mean.
So I wouldn't have expected this to be an easy one, even though it's based on relatively straightforward material. First, we are told that Jim is driving his car at 32 meters per second. So let's do a Jim first. 32 meters per second is his velocity. And again, since there's no acceleration, delta X equals 32 T. And we are told that at time zero, Jim's final position must include the fact that he is already at the 310 meter mark at time zero. That okay? Now, that being said, the officer is traveling at 37 meters per second. So delta X will be 37 T. And he has to start from zero. That good so far? Now here's the deal. We are looking for where they meet up. Does that make sense? We want them to be in the same position. So we want X for Jim to be the same as X for the officer. And we want them there at the same precise moment in time. So if I take all of this and put it in for Jim and all of this and put it in for the officer, I want to look for when they're at the same position. I can then go back and find out where they are. That's how this problem is done. So I'm going to put 32T plus 310 on the left side and 37T on the right side. And I'm going to find out when they're at the same position. All right, so that, this part's not too hard. This is just a little bit of math. I'll get 310 equals 5T, and that suggests, let's see, 62? This is not the answer. It says specifically, how far does the patrol car travel before catching Jim? Well, we know they both travel for 62 seconds. So I want to figure out then from here how I can use my 62 seconds to find where the officer is or how far the officer has traveled. And I'll point out, I'm looking for the displacement of the officer. So I will say that delta X equals 37 times 62. This will tell me how far the officer traveled, the displacement of the officer while catching Jim. This assumes two things though. It assumes that the officer never doubled back on himself and that they both traveled in the same direction. We made those two assumptions in doing this problem. I think that's not unreasonable. Every time I've been pulled over, the police officer has come from behind and I've not tried to evade him by getting off the freeway and trying to hide. So I just take my medicine. Yeah? What was the first assumption you said? That they are both gonna be in the same position at the same point in time. And so in order for us to make the assumptions we made here, we had to assume that they were both traveling in the same direction and that neither person double backed on their position, like turned around. Because it's asking how far the patrol officer went. So they're actually asking for distance. We found the displacement of the officer. So we assume he didn't come backwards and then go forwards or something like that. That makes reasonable sense, but. About what the A question is asking, and hold on for just one. When I define the question, the things that I want you to pay attention to are first, if we're given information that sounds like it's a kinematics problem, and this one does sound like it. We're told the egg was dropped, makes me think of gravity and the acceleration of gravity. We're asked about when the egg stops. That's another motion variable, final velocity. And we're given displacements in getting to the answer. All of these things, seem like reasonable ideas that suggest kinematics. The problem is that the rules for kinematics assume a constant acceleration, which means there can only be one acceleration at a time. 
What brings the egg to the floor? Gravity. Gravity. That is suggesting a 9.8 meters per second squared acceleration. But that's clearly not the answer. The answer has got to be something that the carpet does to the egg. What direction does the carpet push on the egg? Did everybody hear that? Because that's kind of an important detail. The carpet pushes up on the egg. The carpet doesn't pull the egg downwards. The carpet pushes up on the egg to prevent the egg from going through the floor. So the carpet must accelerate the egg upwards. Clearly that's not gravity. It's the acceleration of the carpet. So I see two accelerations. I see an acceleration due to gravity, which pulls the egg to the carpet. But then I see an acceleration from the carpet to prevent the egg from going through the floor. Two accelerations. So that means there's the dropped part of this problem, which has to do with gravity. And then there's the carpet part of this problem, which has to do with the carpet. And I think that there's two different accelerations. There's the acceleration while the egg is being dropped and the acceleration due to the carpet. The reason that's important is that Galileo can only handle one acceleration at a time. So if you're gonna use a motion equation, you'll need a set of motion variables specific to the dropped part of the problem, and you'll need a set of motion variables specific to the carpet portion of the problem. The egg is dropped. That suggests that the egg starts at zero meters per second. The egg falls a distance of, now this part is up for discussion, but I really don't want to discuss it very long. Does the egg fall 45 centimeters or 42 centimeters? I think it's an interpretation. I and mean, is the 45 measured to the top of the carpet or is the 45 measured to the bottom of the carpet? That's what determines whether we use 42 centimeters or 45 centimeters. I don't think it makes a difference because we don't know. So if this were a test, I would have to allow for both assumptions unless I told you differently. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, again, you're not really paying attention. The question is whether this distance is 45 or is this distance 45? That makes a difference, right? I'm going to go under the assumption that to the top of the carpet is 45. Not because it makes a real difference in the problem, but because I really don't care. The problem is exactly the same whether you choose it to be 45 or 42. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to choose 45, which is actually 0.45 meters. During this time, I know the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. However, none of that answers the question. The question is, what is the acceleration due to the carpet? When I think of the carpet, I know that the final velocity of the egg is zero. The carpet stops the egg. Do I know anything else? What? Yes, sir. The change in X would be three. I know that the egg could squish the carpet three centimeters. All right. That's actually 0 0.03 meters. Everything has to be in the same units. So I'm keeping everything in meters and seconds. That's something I would consider for your test. Now, herein lies the problem. The only way for me to figure out the acceleration is for me to know either how long it takes for the egg to stop or how fast the egg was going when it reaches the carpet. I don't know either. Which one of those could I get? All right, Kyle? You get the initial velocity. And how would I get that? Okay. Sure. As the egg falls, it eventually reaches the velocity that was it acquired due to gravity. This is the velocity it has right when it reaches the carpet, which is the final velocity for the fall. Well, that's going to be used as the initial velocity for the carpet. And that's an important detail. And this is how you have to work these problems out. You'll need to find something that might connect the problem together. 
And by the way, this is why the rocket problem was given to you. The tutorial. Okay. So I see a, a clear way to go about this problem. Do you guys? I'm going to use the three pieces of information that were given here to figure out what the final velocity is. And then I will use that final velocity because now I'll have three pieces of information here to figure out what the acceleration is. That's why the rocket problem was given as a tutorial. It did the same thing. So there are a few things I think you should do here first. I think you should decide whether downwards is going to be positive or negative. negative. All right. If I choose downwards to be negative, that means this is negative, right? The acceleration of gravity. The displacement's negative because the egg fell downwards. And this is negative because it squished the carpet downwards. Fair enough? All right. So I'm going to use this relationship because it does not have time in it to figure out what the final velocity of the egg is. Any questions about that? All right, we can move pretty quick here, I think. Um, Vf squared minus 0 squared equals 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 0 0.45. Please look carefully here. For, I'm really only talking to the smart smart folks among you. If we had chose downwards to be positive, do you realize that both of these numbers would be positive and it would make no difference to the answer? Do you see that? So this is still an arbitrary choice, one that you can make and not have it affect your answer as long as you are consistent. Next, um, when you work this out, you'll find that VF squared equals 8.82. Don't be um, blasé about what happens now. Yeah, you take the square root of both sides, but whenever you take the square root, do you remember that you're supposed to take the positive and negative root into account? Don't ever be blasé about that decision. Be focused. The negative answer is the correct one. The square root of 8.82 is 2.97. So the actual answer, though, should be negative 2.97 meters per second because we said negative is downwards if you don't like that you need to write the word downwards next to it i guarantee that's going to be a point on tomorrow's test that also suggests then that the initial velocity here will also be negative 2.97 meters per second it's downwards so always check both roots make sure you know whether it's supposed to be positive or negative now i'm going to go to another page here just to clean it up and get a little bit clearer look. Is that all right with you guys? Mm -hmm. So going back to the idea of the carpet, I have an initial velocity of negative 2.97 meters per second, final velocity of zero, an acceleration that's unknown, and a delta x of negative 0.03 meters. And I want the acceleration. I want to, I want to talk about this idea of minimum for a minute. <laughs> Notice we're going to use the same relationship as we used before. And before I just plug everything in, the final velocity was zero. So this is going to be negative 2.97 squared divided by 2 times delta x. That's going to equal a. I didn't put the delta x in. Look, we assumed it squished the whole carpet right? We assumed it. I have no idea if it did or not. But it asked for the minimum acceleration, the smallest acceleration. Notice this. You guys who are, are pretty mathy realize that with delta x in the denominator, this is an inverse function. The bigger delta x is, the smaller a is. Is 0 0.03 the biggest that delta x can be. Can it squish the carpet more than three centimeters? No. So we are finding the minimum. And it's important to understand that words like minimum suggest you better think about it before you just throw it together. Cody, you can go. All right, so I put in the 0.03. Please notice that the 0.03 is negative. The acceleration works out to be positive 147 meters per second squared. 
Now, don't throw this away. That's not the answer you can put in. First, positive means up or down. That's right. So we should be consistent. We do know the carpet pushes up. Also, the answer that you have to put in is 150 meters per second squared because every number was given in two significant places, which means my answer needs to be in two significant places as well. 147 is three significant places. That's why mastering won't accept it. All right.